waiting for it. Timing is everything. He's going, oh! It can't be real! Didn't see anybody landing the triple right to the smoke. I've never seen anything like it. He finally gets the bomb, but he's not sure where to go, and this might have been the wrong choice. Indeed it is, and there we go. Team Liquid pick up the trophy here at Blast Pro, and they are your champions. Hello and welcome to Inside Esports. I'm Zurich Arguela, and as Vendetta predicted last week, Team Liquid still got some gas. Of course, I'm referring to the CSGO train that never stops, and this weekend, we were blessed with the Blast Pro Series in LA. My boy, Evan Petrao, is going to join us in a bit to help me break down the event, but before that, here are the highlights. They should be fine, because at the very worst, they should be able to trade out kills, and to see how drilled this Team Liquid team is at the moment. Beautiful usage of utility, that's so fantastic! Oh Pens. my god! Elise is always delivering, and there is a shot that just runs right into him. Oh my god! No way that just happened! Cold Zero, eat your heart out. Oh, he's got a third. Nitro slamming down the gauntlet. And Dude! Oh. By the vent, there's a Molotov to force him out, and he comes jumping right out to get the kill. Continues to spray, that's an amazing double kill, and still we gonna win the round. I can't believe Elige managed to control that. Guardian just opening the door to check. It's gonna be a oh. fight as Twist is gonna be taking down Rain. Guardian with the return, and now it's on Twist. Oh, oh a disgusting headshot taking down Guardian, and he wants more, and he's gonna get it as well. Twist with a triple kill. What do you do? You can't really get out, at least he has a kit, but... This is already buying so much time, and Lee is just playing this so smartly. He has this, surely. There is no way, and that's gonna be 16. Team Liquid picking up map number one here at the Blast Pro Grand Finals in LA. He's waiting for it. Timing is everything. He's going, oh! It can't be real! Didn't see anybody landing the triple right to the smoke. I've never seen anything like it. Naf. He's still in play in this round. On the other side is Rain, and he wants more. Now, have you no mercy? He's going to pick up an ace in the round. Oh, wow. <laughs> what even even he's surprised. What a god name's going on. He finally gets the bomb, but he's not sure where to go, and this might have been the wrong choice. Indeed it is, and there we go. Team Liquid pick up the trophy here at Blast Pro, and they are your champions. The Blast Pro Series calls themselves the world's most entertaining esports tournament. And with their big prize pools, fancy graphics, and fast-paced format, is that really all it is? To answer the big brain questions and more, CSGO caster Evan Patrao. How's it going, man? How's it going, Zurich? Thanks for having me back on the show, man. It's always great to talk to you guys. Uh, it's been so long since you visited us in the studio, but let's get into it right away for those in chat who are new to CSGO and Blast Pro Series. Can you quickly break down what the event means and why most fans or players don't really take it too seriously? Yeah, so Blast is completely a spectator experience. From the start of the tournament, they're trying to engage the fans, they're trying to get the fans hyped. It's complete BO1s throughout the tournament. Every team plays every other team, so it's essentially like a big round robin where you know the best records will make it onto playoffs there's no bo3 eliminations it's it's pretty much for the fans to be able to watch their favorite team whether it be cloud nine whether it be mibr as many times as they possibly can uh whereas you know other tournaments like say esl cologne i am chicago that's currently going on um those tournaments have bo3 eliminations so there is a point where you won't be watching your team anymore blast avoids that problem and has you watching them throughout the whole weekend yeah, and there was plenty of things to watch during the event. Unfortunately, there was some scandal surrounding one of their mic'd up segments where they shared a clip of FaZe Clan's coach, YNK, talking to the team about the next round's execution. Now, from an outsider's perspective, this might not be that big of a deal. It actually sounds a little bit like gibberish if you don't know CSGO, but I want to hear your thoughts. Is this a yay move or a nay move for BPL? So, um... There are points where you can mic up players. Uh, mm. There's points where you can let the comms free flow, um, whether it be sometimes in the mid round where it's just, you know, talking about what you want to do. But when you're in freeze time and when you're on timeouts, that's when most of your really big tactical stuff is being given away, essentially. That's when you're communicating with your team some of the bigger strats you have, some of the strats you haven't pulled out yet, um, or even some plays that are very unorthodox. And that became an issue because what happens is when, when you let YNK hop on the mic, like, 
like that during the timeout, during the freeze time, and he starts giving away information like that, it, it doesn't necessarily help the other team in the moment, but moving forward, teams that look back and analyze that, you know, that audio clip, that voice clip, are able to get so much information from it to help them to counter uh, FaZe down, down the line, essentially. Now, all those teams know that there is a certain play that FaZe likes to do when they react to certain amount of nades, when they have an, uh, the money for an AWP, when they find themselves, you know, being taken down a peg in the server, they have a certain, you know, set play with that AWP towards secret that they're going to try and do. So it kind of gives that information to the team um, about how they can react when they see certain things going up against FaZe. Yeah, when I saw the clip, I was like, this is crazy intel. <laughs> but as you said, it's a good thing that leak didn't really affect uh, FaZe's performance because they were a whole different team than they were last yeah. week at ESL Cologne where they got stomped super early in the group stage. But let's talk about FaZe. What did yeah. they change? What worked? And what did they lack to topple the NA juggernaut? Well, I mean, first of all, Liquid's Liquid. I don't think anybody at that tournament was going to be able to topple them. In fact, I didn't think FaZe was going to have such a uh, a performance throughout Blast LA, to be honest. When you have teams like Renegades, um, you have the new NRG lineup coming in. Those were really the two teams that I thought were going to be able to take down FaZe and make their way to the Grand Finals, but FaZe had a per phenomenal performance throughout the weekend, uh, taking down NRG as well. When they went up against NRG, they looked like a completely different type of monster. Not, th this is the phase that we're used to seeing here. I mean, the recent addition of Neo hasn't been too strong uh, in terms of adding to their firepower. However, However, you know, this weekend was really where we saw FaZe come alive and really find some form that gives us promise going into the major, going into the latter parts of this year. Uh, yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, NRG is another team that showed up uh, placing in third place. It seems like their new IGL status loss finally setting in. Uh, talk to us about the hardships of replacing your main shot caller and what is the new potential of this new squad with Stan on the helm? Yeah, so Stanislaw, I mean, he's got his work cut out for him. Stan, mm -hmm. you're a great player, bud, but you're filling some big boots right now. Uh, Daps built that lineup from scratch, like Daps does with almost every single team he's on here. Going back to the early 2014 CSGO days, Daps builds the team up. Eventually, the team hits a wall. Daps gets replaced, and they bring in. And I think it's been twice now that they brought in Stanislaw for Daps in, in you know, Daps' <laughs> player history. So Stanislaw is kind of that guy that, you know, when Daps hits the wall, they're going to get the more firepower in. Daps adds the structure. Daps adds the strategy. Daps creates the chemistry. Then Stanislaw comes in and just kind of pushes it over the edge because he does have better firepower than Dabs. Mm -hmm. um, but with this NRG lineup, these players were so dedicated to Dabs. They were so dedicated to his play style. I think it's going to be very hard for Stanislaw to actually, you know, create that easy, smooth transition. I think NRG is going to have a couple humps in the, uh, moving forward, but I definitely feel like NRG with Stanislaw does have the potential to be break into that, you know, tournament contender you know that tournament favorite almost because going into blast la i was actually looking at them as one of the teams to possibly make the grand finals against liquid it's just a matter of time it just depends on how stanislaw can take this team to the next level moving forward yeah i mean they were absolutely phenomenal but we were already talking about daps and he used to wear you know the red jersey the energy red jersey but now we see him yeah. in blue and it looks really weird so let's talk about the c9 squad because they literally just got revamped like a brand yep. new baby. They kept one player in automatic and the rest are brand spanking you. Evan, tell us, did yeah. C9 strike gold in this new lineup? So, I mean, once again, it's a blast. And like we spoke about earlier, we can't really attest too much to blast. I think C9 had one win and two ties and two losses mm -hmm. uh, throughout this tournament. So, I mean, it wasn't really anything crazy that they were doing. Um, the part that really strikes me for C9 is that they're, they're giving Daps the reign again. They're giving Daps the possibility to build another great lineup. And this lineup does have the potential. We saw that within them. Um, it's just a matter of time. And if Daps is able to build this lineup now which i believe jumped 281 spots up in the rankings That's into nice. the top 20. yeah it was wild um so i mean if daps can build this lineup again to the top this is what is going to cement daps as one of north america's best igls if not north america then globally one of the best igls to ever do it in csgo so this is a 
really good um, opportunity for Dabs to actually create something, what could be almost his final CSGO roster, if you think about his age and where mm -hmm. he's getting to now, um, and just kind of cement his legacy as, you know, this team builder, this team leader, this exceptional player that can kind of grow, you know, any player into a top contender. Wow, that is very well said, Evan. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's always nice to talk to you. Next time, drop by the studio so I can fist bump you in person. <laughs> Next time I'm in Toronto, I'll come by, guys.